Well, welcome back. I've got something really exciting to share with you today. One of my all-time favorite cameras. And uh, I've had this thing since the late 70s when it first came out. Actually, it came out between the about 72 and I got around 75. But I got a new one. I've had it ever since. And uh, I'm kind of a minimalist. I like things simple. I don't like batteries. I don't like a lot of gears. I don't want anything too complicated. I just want a body, a lens on the front, and hold some film. So I found the ultimate camera that fits those requirements. And this is it. This is the camera right here. Kind of small, right? Lightweight. Well, actually, it's pretty solid built. It's metal. And this is the body for the Horseman convertible. And uh, they call it convertible because it converts to a lot of different formats or uh, configurations. So this is the frame. And you can put a lens on the front and put a, any kind of film holder you want on the back. And it's part of the old Horseman uh, uh, family. And this was something the Japanese came out with as the Horseman. I have the a VH. They had a different model that had a rangefinder on it. But this is a copy of the early baby Graflex, the Graflex that they made that shot 6x9 format. I think they call it the Graflex uh, 23. Uh, they had both a speed graphic version and just a, the straight, like a crown graphic type thing. But the Japanese took all the best features of that, modified it, made it a lot better. This is a really great technical field camera. But the reason I'm telling you about this, I'm going to do a video about this later, but this is a great camera, but that's not what we're talking about today. I just wanted to show you that the back on this is 6x9 and takes a lot of different adapters, reflex finders and all that. And everything that you can put on the back of this, you can put on the back of this. So we'll take a closer look at that and how this camera comes together. It's quite amazing. So if we have the frame and we want to put a lens on it, the only lens they made for this, actually this was kind of a prototype. They made these and uh, like I said, uh, around 72. And years later they came out with a 6x12 upscale version, much larger, very, very expensive. So uh, takes great quality images, but it's really kind of clunky. It's kind of big and it gets away from the basic ideas of the beauty of this thing. So they only came out with a 62 millimeter lens for this. Very sharp though, well corrected. Uh, I've used this thing for years and and I've had like I think three or four magazine covers, magazine spreads, calendars, postcards. This thing really paid for itself in no time. You can do it, use it handheld or on a tripod, but let's show you how this thing comes together. The uh, lens itself just slides in place. There's a groove here and there's a lock on here, but you just slide that in place. Clicks right there, locks. Now we're building our system. And then we want to put a film back on it, or maybe you don't want to put a film back on. You want to have a ground glass for real critical focusing. You can focus with this with a sports finder. It works great handheld because it's so small. But if you want to uh, get really critical, perfect composition, you want to use, start out with a ground glass possibly. So this just, it's kind of like a mini graph lock, graph lock back on that. These two uh, spring little clips there, slide that in. It's in place there. You'll see that here it says off, and then when we lock it, it says on. Now our ground glass is on here. It's protected by this swing out door. Beautiful. It doesn't, I don't think it has a Fresnel lens, but it's sure bright. I've never had any problems with it. So now that's what we do our critical focusing on. And then we have to decide what kind of film format we want. Uh, as I mentioned, the um, VF. Uh, uh, horseman that I showed you previously, uh, it has a graph lock back and it will take all the backs that the old uh, Graflex cameras had. And that uh, includes one of my favorites I use all the time. And it's only, it's a six by six, but I do that not for my real important shooting, but if I'm testing films and you know, this has 12 exposures as opposed to the six by nine, which only has eight. And, uh, 
So if I'm doing a film comparison, I'm likely to use this because I had 12 shots to each roll. So I might be shooting uh, two different types of color film and doing a comparison. So great flexibility there. But let's decide we're going to put on a 6x9 back. Okay, we have to unlock the ground glass after we focused on our tripod, of course. And we put that to the open position, or the off, and lift this right up. Put that aside. And these horseman backs are fantastic. They're so precision made, and it's like silk. When you advance the, the film, it's just like silk. So again, we're going to slide it under these top clips here, and then we'll just lock it in place. Close it. And that thing is on there. That's really secure. And look how compact this is. It's amazing. And we can also put on a 6x7, or like I said, the 6x6. Won't go up to 6x12, but it'll, uh, it'll do a beautiful job on these 6x9s. And that's my favorite format because <clears throat> I like that proportion. A 2x3. And, uh, you know, it's a two by three aspect ratio, two and a quarter by three and a quarter. And uh, that baby graphic I mentioned about earlier, uh, I think it was called the, the 23. <clears throat> and I believe it's because it was a two by three aspect ratio. But now we have our basic camera. And it is a dream to hand hold. And you can get a strap here, carry it around your neck if you want. But uh, you cock it on one side, fire it on the other. And uh, we'll take a closer look at all these features in a second here, but I just want to show you how versatile this thing is and how small it is. And by comparison, here's my 6D Mark II. This is what I use for wildlife primarily. The camera I use for most of my work is the 6D Mark II full frame. This is a CPS sensor, but this is great for wildlife telephoto lenses. So look at the size of that. They're just, you know, there's not much difference. In fact, I think this is smaller. I got a 24 lens comparable to this one, which is all about 20-something, similar to 24. And uh, so it's a pretty wide-angle lens, so you have great depth of field. And so uh, it's very forgiving. So let's look at some of the features. We have um, the ability to use the sports finder. And the way that works, this is a little sports finder that just slides right in the back. So that just slides right in there, and it will pop up. And if you want it out of the way, you can fold it down, and it rotates over here out of the way. Now, the old backs, when this camera first came out, there was a model prior to this, and the backs it had were had this big knob, and it's kind of clunky, and it was just uh, awkward. But these are very modern and slim. You don't have to take the back part of the uh, sports finder section off. Well, this works in conjunction with the frame that pops up here. And that's what you do when you're out on the road shooting around hand holding this. And it's really quite light. It's lighter, much lighter than my 7D with this 24 millimeter lens on it. And so it's great for hand holding, just doing walking around the street and shooting. And, uh, and very compact. Get the stuff out of the way here. And, uh, Another interesting feature here, as I told you, it'll take any of the backs that the, uh, the larger technical camera takes, including a reflex finder. I'll take this back off now, just lift that off, and I don't use this very often, but it's nice to have when you need it. And this is a reflex finder, and it goes on just like a roll film back. Slides under there. And then you just lock it in place, and it's on there solid. And that's what that looks like. But look at this. So this has got your finder here. You look through it like this, and very bright. It's amazing. It's got the ground glass built into it, so the focus is very precise. This is what you do in a horizontal position. I'd have it on a tripod. I won't be doing this like on the handheld. But if you want to do a vertical, turn that, and this just rotates. Isn't that amazing? What a beautiful system. And again, all the backs that fit on this will fit on the, the technical camera. So again, you just want to take it off. We just put that to the off position, and it'll lift right off. Put our roll film back on. And 
we're back to business. That's all there is to it. So as you see, the backs are easy to change. And I've got the six by six backs, which give you 12 exposure. And I have a six by seven. I hardly ever use that. That's not my favorite format. And uh, that gives you uh, 10 shots. And then the six by nine, it's quite large. So it gives you only eight. But boy, the image quality, those are big negatives. Fantastic. So let's uh, zoom in a little bit, take a closer look at that. But the lens you'll see is 62 millimeter, 5.6. And of course it's a horseman. And it is very, very sharp. And it goes from uh, 5.6 all the way down to 32. So it's quite a range. Now keep in mind that uh, these larger films, unlike 35 millimeter or your full frame digital, you can stop way down and it doesn't become such a factor when I'm talking about the diffraction. So don't worry about stopping down. Uh, you'll see that the cocking lever is here and that's how we fire it. And I've got it on bulb now. You see the lens is open, the shutter is open there. Like go. And it'll go all the way up to 500th. We have a PC connector for your electronic flash. I have two of them on this camera. I suspect that this is for bulb. I've never used it. But uh, that might be a bulb for the delayed uh, sync on uh, bulb, flash bulbs. But electronic flash, I've always used this, never had a problem. Okay, looking at the lens, we see several different settings here. It goes from bulb. These are the shutter speeds. All the way to 500. Of course, it syncs at flash all the way to 500. The f-stops, 5.6 to 32. And our focusing scale right here. Infinity. Now this says it goes down to just under one meter, just under three feet. But remember, if you stop down, you're extending that depth of field quite a bit. So it's considerably less than three feet if you stop down. If you're wide open, that's what we have. And then we have the depth of field scales down here. So you can say your subject is focused at three feet, right in the middle here. You see three or three meters, I'm sorry. And what we're shooting at F32. That means everything in past infinity to 12 meters is going to be in focus. But if we want to shift the infinity further out here, we can bring the foreground in focus. It's called zone focusing. And uh, that's what I frequently do. Always do that when I'm uh, doing street photography. And I'm usually shooting at like F11 or 16 and focus at about um, seven feet. And man, everything's going to be sharp. I forgot to mention that these take a 43 millimeter uh, filters and it's threaded so it just threads right in there but I couldn't find a matter of fact I had a lot of 52 millimeter filters for my Nikon cameras and so I just got a little step up ring and that just uh, screws into there I mount my uh, 52 millimeter filters in the adapter and just put that on top there. For black and white, my favorite filter is a 15G, this uh, dark orange one. Might use a light yellow if there's not much haze. This is the filter size. I also have an adapter. I've gone from uh, the uh, 52 up to 77. As you may recall, that's what all of my filters are for my digital cameras. So 77, that's what I use most of the time. I hardly use the smaller ones now. So that's the lens, extremely sharp. The colors are great. It's just uh, absolutely a dream to use. The thing I didn't show you uh, earlier is the cable reads up here. You don't have to fire it here. You can put a cable release here on the tripod. It also has a tripod mount on the top of the camera and one on the bottom. One of the things I forgot to mention, this uh, viewfinder that I have, I took off of an old uh, Mamiya Press camera and the coverage is about the same as uh, this lens, uh, around 24 millimeter. And it's from, a, as I said, a press camera. And you can see it's the Mamiya Press 65 millimeter finder. The finder itself has a cold shoe on the top. It's bright and clear and it has markings for both 6x7 and 6x9 and it just slides right in the cold shoe right there. And so bright and I much prefer using this rather than the uh, sports finder setup. They have those wire finders are not very accurate, but this is extremely accurate. So if you get one of these cameras, I think you're going to love it. I highly recommend it. And on the back, there's not a lot to see, but this is a little tab reminder. I uh, One of my standard films I shoot is a Portra 400. And this is the little tab 
from the back of the film box slides out. I don't have any film in here right now, so what I normally do, I just turn this turn this around, slide it back in. And this is uh, 10 exposure, so this is a 6x7 back. The advanced lever, silky smooth. And when you take your one shot, you uh, have to pull this lever over uh, to go to the next one. It, it'll lock at that. The dark slide comes out for your holder. On the right side, we'll see this is the lock to uh, lock or open the back. So you don't have to really take the back off completely. If you shot a roll, you can open the back and take the film out. The dark slide. And this tells you uh, it's the basic frame and indicates 6x7 or 6x9. Well, that wraps it up for today. Thanks again for joining me. I hope you liked it, and if you got something out of it, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed already, please do. It really helps, and don't forget to ding, uh, put that little uh, click on the, the bell, and you'll be notified of any upcoming videos. So, till next time, have a great time, and stay focused.